I don't know what's going on with this shirt, but it is a mess. The words are coming off and everything, but I love it because it's a crop top and it says nope. The same thing that y'all are probably saying about my title. Hey you guys, my name is Michelle McDaniel and this is my channel. My thoughts will probably offend you. And welcome to my new series, Responding to Fat Chicks Comments. And I'm sure you're already offended by the title. Whoa, 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 I get it, okay, shh, shh, shh. I know, calm down, let me explain, let's communicate, let's, let's listen. So I wanted to start a series where I find posts usually by body positivity or fat acceptance influencers on Instagram and respond to them in an educated and civil way. I find with many of these fat acceptance individuals with them just accepting their size and trying to force their specific beauty standards on other people and having everybody else accept it is really just lack of understanding and also the way they look at weight loss or health or may I say it, diet culture is just lack of understanding understanding the human body and the fact that there is a ton of horrible information and damaging tips when it comes to weight loss and what it takes to live a healthy lifestyle mentally and physically. So I thought when I come across posts made by these individuals that I would respond in a very civil and educated way to try to get some insight on the issue that they were posting about in a very healthy and not crazy fitness lady way. Because I feel like there's two extremes, the fat acceptance, you know, accept the fat, eat everything that you want be comfortable in you know your obese body and then the extreme like fitness people who are like only eat chicken only eat broccoli don't matter the taste lose the fat zero percent body fat ah! you know and if you guys have been following me for a while then you know that I like to be very balanced and um you can't tell but I am totally balancing on one leg Ooh, I'm kind of ashy so welcome to episode one to responding to fat chicks Comments. Oh, and if you are upset of my use of the word fat, according to many fat acceptance or body acceptance influencers, fat, fat is just a descriptor such as skinny, thin, muscular, dang it, I'm not wearing a short sleeve shirt, but muscular, um, average, it's a descriptor. So according to them, the F word fat is not a bad word. So if you got an issue with that, you take it up with them. When I was fat, I was okay with the word fat. So let's just dig right on into this video. I came across this post made by Ivernon2000. Not sure if I'm saying it correct, but she is a Muslim feminist, model, public speaker, inclusive content creator, and freelance writer. The girl does it all, and not only does she do all of that, but she's also black, fat, and perfect. See? I told you. I also told you that fat is not a bad word. So let's read what she said in the post that caught my eye as a personal trainer. Scales give me anxiety because it catapults me back to a time where I tested my pee for carbs twice a day. A time where I stripped nude before breakfast and weighed myself and then again before bed. The number on the machine dictated whether I was going to cry myself to sleep or walk around like I was worthy. There is no in between with eating disorders. Okay, so all of that is bad. None of those thoughts that she said that she had is healthy. And I really want to emphasize to everyone that's watching that limiting your carbs excessively, you know, dramatically is not healthy. Being so obsessed with the scale is not healthy. You guys know that from my shut the up about the scale video. That's something I have to learn myself. You know, I'm not a naturally thin woman. I'm a more athletic body type. I've always carried more weight than most of the people in you know middle school and high school and the scale never represented what I did how much work I put you know into the gym and when I wasn't educated in fitness and health and you know muscle and fat the ratio um, the number definitely dictated whether I was going to feel worthy or whether I was going to be upset for the rest of the day. And that's not healthy. I don't like when my clients are obsessed with the skip. Now with all of that being said, I think it's time that we learn to accept that there are different body types. And with that also being said, I think it's time that we accept that obesity is not a body type. And by that, I mean we are not naturally obese. It's not natural for us to carry 100, 200, 300, 400 pounds of fat on top of our bones and on top of our joints and our um, internal organs. Just because you're not thin like the other girls doesn't mean it's a good thing to just accept 
being overweight or throw everything out the window and balloon up to be obese. Obsessing over being thin or obsessing over the scale is not healthy, just as being obese is not healthy physically. Today I had a physical. The doctor was a very thin white woman. I'm not sure what the doctor's race had to do with anything, but maybe we'll find out as we keep reading. First thing she says, you're up 20 pounds since last year. I explained to her that I have been lifting heavier weights and that some of it could be muscle. She disregards that and asks what I've been snacking on. So I get this a lot with a few clients when I weigh them and the scale goes up and they go, well, it's muscle, it's muscle, right? It has to be muscle, it's completely muscle. It's muscle. And it could totally be muscle, but I highly doubt that most of that 20 pounds that she gained was 20 pounds of pure muscle. Which is why I take a lot of my clients, we take three measures when we uh, look at if they're getting results or not. We do the scale, which is my least favorite. We do measuring tape. And then of course we take pictures because you can't lie to your eyes. But anyway, it's usually my clients who are not sticking to the program and when I weigh them and it goes up, they're like, oh, it's muscle, it's muscle, right? And it's just got to be muscle. And I look at it and I'm like, you haven't been sticking to the program, you haven't been consistent with your eating, you're not keeping your food journal, it's very easy to gain body fat. It's very easy to go over your calorie intake. So if they are not going with the plan, it's fat. And usually it shows in their before and after pictures, when we take their progress pictures and they either can step it up and start following the program because, I mean, they're paying me, why waste your money? Or they can continue to not get the body and the health that they originally seeked me out for. Disregards that and asks what I've been snacking on. I told her I've cut back on chips and replaced them with pretzels and wheat thins. Well, you know, gotta keep up with the calories. One serving of 16 wheat thins are 140 calories. Don't ask me how I know that. She laughs. I'm not laughing. Damn. So I hear this a lot from frustrated individuals who want to lose weight. I'm not sure if she wants to lose weight, but in my profession, people usually come to me wanting to lose weight. And so they want to lose weight, but they can't. And they say, well, I switched from this unhealthy food to this healthy food. But in reality, if you look at the nutritional information, both unhealthy and this seemingly healthy food have the same calories inside of them. And even if this is healthy, it still contains calories. And if you eat too many of them, you will gain weight. Chips, pretzels, and wheat thins have very similar calories, depending on which brand. But pretzels and wheat thins are only about 40 calories less, except one is looked at as unhealthy. Chips, which are my kryptonite, especially hot Cheetos, and others that are looked at as healthier alternatives, but when in reality, they are both quite the same. So when I was one of those people that were like, oh, I won't eat chips, I'll eat wheat thins and pretzels, because I was one of those people, uh, I would actually eat more wheat thins or pretzels are the healthy alternative because I would think it was healthy and so I would just eat more because it's healthier. Rather than the chips, I would limit myself because it was thought of as unhealthy. Remember that scene in Hey Arnold when Harold, you know, the uh, designated fat kid of the neighborhood wanted to lose weight because everybody was making fun of him? He's probably so skinny, we won't even recognize him. There he is! Bye, Captain! I had a great time! Hey, you guys, what's new? Don't say anything. Don't worry, Arnold. We know how to be discreet. Harold, what happened? You're as big as a house! And then he's, uh, ended up getting the healthier alternative from the Jolly Ollie Man, but he got double the healthy alternative. 12 low-fat Mr. Fudgies is the same as six regular Mr. Fudgies. Just leave me alone. It's none of your business. But Harold. Leave me alone, Arnold. Just leave me alone. And then everybody still made fun of them. That was pretty much me. I was bad at math and loved food and could eat a lot of it. Many companies love to trick people thinking that something is healthy and low calorie when it's really not. So make sure to just flip over that bag and look at the nutritional information. I replied that I can't count calories because I'm susceptible to eating disorders and that I'd rather just choose healthier alternatives. So once again, just because something is a healthier alternative doesn't mean it doesn't have a lot of calories in it or calories at all. Everything has calories and everything can be easily built up to over for your maintenance calories, thus making you gain weight. So while I understand the whole I can't count calories because I have you know um, eating disorders in my past, I do know a lot of people that use that as an excuse as well. And I do get clients like that that tell me like I can't 
count calories. I am prone to eating disorders. I don't want to do that, you know, and they're gaining weight. And I tell them, well, this is what it is. You're gaining weight. And that's not healthy as well as not being mentally stable. So you have to figure something out. So usually what we do is I get them to count the calories and we really, really, really work on that their mental state when it comes to diet. Because once again, dieting is not bad. Anything that you are eating is your diet. That's a diet. Whether it's double mint greasy cheeseburgers every single meal, or you know, you're eating a very healthy uh meals that's that's a diet whatever you're eating whatever is putting into your your mouth that's your diet bad is the crash diets the over obsessing the um insane diets that just strip away all of your macronutrients that's what's bad having a healthier mindset and eating healthy is not bad so once again when i get someone who says they just can't you know count the calories because they have past eating disorders going on it's, it's gonna just them up mentally that's when I know that we really need to work on their mental health as well as their physical health so they don't fall back into that eating disorder um, mentality and technically this chick that we're talking about today has an eating disorder it's just on the opposite end all of my clients who had eating disorders and started counting their calories and we worked on their mental health are just fine in fact their mental health is a lot better now that they have lost the weight because being overweight and obese has linked to very many mental issues oh my god what is up with this shirt i get it you guys just roast me it's okay i don't care it's fine just to go into more of this healthier alternative thing that she said and how it's very easy to overdo the calories on healthier alternatives natural peanut butter is very healthy has all your nice healthy fats in there but if i pair a whole jar of peanut butter with a whole box of wheat thins, which are marketed as healthy. I'm going to eat well over 5,000 calories, and I'm not sure if you guys know, but one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories, and with that little snack, you have put on your one pound of fat in one sitting. And to the people saying, who the heck eats a whole jar of peanut butter and wheat thins? Multiple times, okay? I had some serious, issues back then. Hunger issues, and that wouldn't even fill me up. So I would easily eat 5,000 calories in one sitting, plus whatever the hell else I was eating that day. Guys, I love food. It's very easy to overeat. I still love food now that I'm very aware of what I'm eating, and that's why I like to count my calories, because I love overeating. I mean, some people would love to go to the club, spend time with friends, you know, go on vacation. I would like to just sit on my couch, turn on a good anime series and just eat a bunch of junk food. Mainly hot Cheetos and cheesecake. The classiness is just pouring onto your screen right now. I know. Comment your favorite junk food in the comment section. That's why it's very important to look at calories and choose very high fiber, balanced, tasty food so you can stay satisfied and full all at the same time. So then you won't eat whole cans of peanut butter like I did. She ain't have to say about my eating disorders because big girls can't have those, right? So I'm sure she's being very sarcastic there. I'm sure she believes that big girls can have eating disorders and I agree with her. They can have eating disorders. In fact, like I said, she has an eating disorder right now except for the fact that she eats too much rather than forcing herself to under eat. She probably still has some of that mental state that she had when she was on the reverse end of the um, eating disorder world. Not sure how to feel about my weight gain or how medical professionals treat different bodies. All I know is that diet culture is toxic. So I do kind of want to touch on the subject of how medical professionals treat different body types. I'm not sure how everyone else has been treated or how it normally goes along. I'm not educated in that sense when it comes to that, but I can tell you my experience with it. Like I said, I'm not a very naturally thin, straight up and down person. Mama's got some birth and hips down here. But I also had quite a bit of muscle on me too. I was a, a lot bulkier. And just for fun, when I went to the doctor for my endometriosis, I put on a fat sweatshirt and very large sweatpants. And some girls look smaller when they wear, you know, like bigger clothes. I just look like I'm fat. My hips are wide, my shoulders are broad. I just look 
like I'm trying to cover up some fat. So I go to the doctor and they weigh me and I weigh about, what I was about 155 and I'm 5'2", guys. I am hobbit size. I'm very short and stocky. But I step on the scale and then they say my weight. It's like 155, 156, something like that. Upper range of the 150s. And the nurse or whoever the person is looks at me and she starts telling me about the risks of being overweight and where I fall with my height and weight. And then we went over like my uh, family history and diabetes runs in my family because my family literally eats like <laughs> yeah they literally eat really really bad so she's kind of giving me all that information and looking at me like you need to lose some weight da -da -da -da, all that stuff and I'm just taking it all in like yes girl give it all over to me and I told her you know what I, I eat really healthy I, I really monitor my food and I work out five times a week and she kind of disregards that and keeps telling me you know you gotta lose weight blah 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 count your calories all that stuff so she takes me to the back and I guess she has to like fill me up a little bit down here because of my endometriosis I'm not too sure what she's filling for but she felt down here and on my stomach not my vagina they did that too but for this part they felt my stomach she was filling up my stomach and right when she touches it and presses down she goes I had a full-on six-pack and she goes, oh, well that, that changes a lot. And I'm like, oh, okay. But she completely like treated me completely different after that. I'm not sure how, you know, people get treated when they're overweight. It could be like an insecurity thing as you go in there. So then you take certain things, you know, to a fence. Um, but who am I to say? I'm just saying that was my experience. I did get treated a little bit differently after she found out that I was quite, once again, I don't have, I have sleeves on. But once she found out that I was uh, buff, Diet culture is a new term a lot of fat acceptance women like to use. She thinks diet culture is toxic and that's a whole nother discussion. But you know what else is toxic? Obesity. Giving people the impression that there's such a thing as health at every size when that is not a thing. Science has proven that many times, but these fat activists never seem to talk about the facts and the numbers. This is extremely sad to me. This is not healthy. This is never ever glamorized. No one would ever tell this girl that she needs to just accept her body how it looks right here in this picture. If she went to the doctor, they would want to get her in some kind of support group, help, mental, everything. But this, according to many people nowadays is something that is not toxic. I just wish that more fat acceptance individuals or body positivity activists who are so vocal about how unhealthy it is mentally to obsess about the scale or obsessed with being thin or, or, or obsessed with having these unrealistic beauty standards, um, usually they are targeting, you know, being thin, would equally talk about how unhealthy it is to be obese or in their words, fat. I think both is very unhealthy. And once again, I think we need to preach more about balance. And I'm standing on one leg again. Yep, there and I'm still ashy. Let me know if you agree in the comment section, along with if you enjoyed or didn't enjoy this new series that I'm bringing to you guys. Don't forget to share with a friend, comment and like this video, plus follow me on Instagram. Remember, we don't have to be a size two. Abs are great, but not needed to be healthy. The scale should not be dictating our happiness, but health is very important, and I want anyone who is watching this video right now to be the healthiest individual that they can be. All while enjoying that occasional bag of hot Cheetos. Just some time. I'll see you guys next video, you guys. Remember, be a beast. I'm wearing long sleeves again. You probably think I'm not muscular at all, but be a beast, and I will see you guys next video.